we're gonna put in just some taster nets, just to get kind of a taste of what's here. I won't know that much until we come back and check in a couple of days, and if there's any good sign of fish, fish them for another week, then you have an idea of what's here, and I can really start to fish the area. 48 hours later, Trevor is back. It's been colder at night, and the ice has thickened. His secret weapon is hired hand Pete. Pete knows what's up in Mesa. Yeah, he's fished here for a long, long time. As long as my dad's been fishing, Pete's been fishing too. So he knows the spot. The goal is to set some deeper nets, but how far out they can safely go remains to be seen. Who knows, we might not even be in enough water then. By the time we're at the crack, you know, we might have to park this thing and then okay, just set a couple nets past the crack instead of going and setting six or something. I didn't want to take a chance with my side-by-side -side and go through the rough ice, the flat cracks, you know, it's just fresh, fresh ice that just froze. In mid-December, the ice is still inconsistent. In some places, it will hold a crew on snow machines, but in others, it won't support the weight of a single person on foot. So we'll probably just take snowmobiles out there when we go to lift them. Oh, I'm finally into enough water to set, like, deep nets, you know, the depth of nets all the guys fish around here, so I can feel it out in the deeper water, feel it out closer to shore here. Gives me an idea of how I'm going to fish this area, if I fish it at all. Gotta be there. Come on. Back in the narrows. You think you have it with the heavy hook, but you don't. We'll just have to hook it on the sled and give it a yank. Chris's day has gone from bad to worse. Bring that knife. I want to wrap this, but I don't want to get caught in the track. Well, cut this here. See if I can't pull this. Don't look at it. Oh, got a running line for there? The first net of the day produced a mountain of whitefish, but every net since is frozen into the ice. It's a bit shocking, an extremely rare event for someone with Chris's experience. This side, turn, and then under the ice. Turn, turn, turn. Up, find the cork line. It just throws from here to there. Pull it out then, pull it out. So that the whole net's not frozen. It's now a salvage operation, as the crew tries to recover the nets and save whatever catch they can. Well, I can start augering right from there. See if we can get one out first. And usually it takes a bombardier to get them unstuck, and we don't have a bombardier out here. It's further south. Either we did something wrong or something, because the same net, same place last year, Never had these problems. That current. That's there the. That pull it right out. Look where it's heading. I know, it's crazy. It's going all the way over here. North of us, there's a big body of water that's 100% not frozen. So there could have been a lot of slush that came and it could have gone under the ice and come through here. I thought there had been enough fish in it that they would have held them down. There's something else wrong. Whatever the cause, it's been an expensive and frustrating day. It's a different thing every time. Lake doesn't write a script. It plays the tune and you do the dance. And so we're dancing today. Looks thick enough to me. Those are frozen rocks, so that just the chisel. 90 kilometers northeast of Gimli. I thought that was clumps of ice. First hit, it's, those are all frozen rocks the end of the chisel. On their first trip to Hecla, Mike and Justin get a quick lesson from the lake. Well, in the first 30 seconds of being here, Mike stabbed an ice chunk, AKA a big rock, and uh, totally blunted the end of the needle bar. We're probably 40 bucks down before we even set foot on the ice today. Jesus! That is rough. Yeah, that's been rough. Rough and I'm already thinking about my hot tub. She's cool. It's time to be at home in Husevik. The boys have come north to set where the ice is thicker. Do you see it? No. Go up a bit. One. Snow's right on the home. Wait, that's where you it's gotta be right under here somewhere. Here. Oh. That is dead. What? 
So you got like an inch. An inch? Yeah. Or at least where it's supposed to be thicker. Get this snowmobile away from that. Because of the snow, I guess. Yeah, snow insulates. And this snow must have been here for a while because it's like max an inch. Holy, that's that. You did that with a chisel? Yeah. There's no lifter being parked here for a while. Stop chopping it. That's crazy. Choosing where to set nets usually comes down to acquired knowledge about the lake, experience from previous seasons, and prevailing currents beneath the ice. There are no guarantees, however, so being lucky isn't a bad thing either. Yeah, we went out, kind of coming out here blind, not knowing what was to be expected. Picked a good clear spot, jigged it out, lo and behold. Old, you know, snow is an insulator. Land up on a snow drift, one inch. Next net, snow drift, inch, inch and a half. Well, there, we got one in. Might be a mighty thin ice, but we got one in. You can hear the ice creaking and popping a little bit. All I hear is creaking and popping. Yeah, it's cracking, big time. Is this lake opening up or what the hell is going on? The guys are four kilometers from shore and the water below is six meters deep. If they fall through, the current will sweep them away so fast, they'll be unable to swim to the surface. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a big one. As we were out there setting, you could hear the lake shifting. We're the first weight that's been on this ice. So it's really moving, it's popping. Then all of a sudden, kaboom. You look and you can see the ice all around us start splitting. I normally don't even get spooked by it, but today, that was a good one. That caught me off guard. I expected some movement. We're only on four or five inches of ice. That was a shaker, That that I could feel that one. Although not an exact science, typically you need seven and a half centimeters of ice to support a single person. A snowmobile requires at least 13 centimeters, and anything heavier than a truck or bombardier needs 30 centimeters of ice to support its weight. And we knew it moved somewhere, and that somewhere was right along the shore. It shifted pretty good here. Got a few feet of water, and we had the cross coming home. Keeps you on your feet, that's for sure. Lines here, that's supposed to be hooked up to like either a primer or something like that. That's not even hooked up, so I don't know. That's not fixed. <laughs> Sit back and relax, wait for the boss. There's a problem with a snowmobile, and Trevor is running late. Um, I was trying to rush here as fast as I could, but my truck was burning oil. You don't think this little guy will start, eh? The uh, air box off and the fuel lines are off. Another day in paradise, boys. I have two running vehicles, I'm happy about that. That's great. If I make it with these two snowmobiles, I'll be very happy. After a delayed start, the crew heads out to lift Trevor's first nets of the season. Nothing. Wide, wide, wide open. Look at that. Brutal. And then here, there's 10 inches. Except there's a problem reaching the nets. The flat crack has completely opened up, making it impossible to cross. Oh, that's a pain in the ass. So I need to find a real place to cross. 40 feet of open water. That's pretty crazy. The crew is lucky. This flat crack could have opened up while they were lifting nets on the other side, leaving them stranded. By the time you get back, this flat crack could have opened from two feet to 20 feet, and you're actually trapped. And you might have enough gas in daylight to find a way around it, but you could be in real you know, unless you want to swim across it, you're not going to get back. The boys find a safer spot to cross. Pete will go first with a sled to test it. Hey, Riley, you want to watch? Tell me if it, see it move on either side? Okay. Looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to cross it. What do you think, Riley? It's a little closer here. Okay, I'm going to try it there then. pretty good yeah all they need to do now is pull up this first net what the heck I you know what the heck huh we couldn't have frozen it up we set them pretty I put extensions on all of them yeah the stones were all the way down lots and lots and lots of water for those nets 
It's only been here for two nights. Can't be frozen up. No kidding. In his first lift of the season, Trevor's net won't budge. It's just getting stuck on, eh? That's got to be what it is. Back in Nasa. Could be full of tulipies, boys. That could be what it is. Trevor, Pete, and Riley are attempting their first lift of the season, but the net is frozen into the ice. Getting a net out when frozen is time-consuming, can cause damage, and cost Trevor the loss of valuable catch. Look at how the rope is going down. Can you see? It's frozen right to the surface. That's what it is frozen up. We froze in lines, which could have just been knots that came untied because we reuse the same stones over and over. So you add into them, you add knots to knots to knots to knots, and sometimes they can come undone. Yeah, I'm, I'm using leverage to try and bust her loose, but somebody hold the end of it so it doesn't slide over. I can pull from here. Oh, well, I got it up a little bit. It's frozen in good. I don't know what to do. I was giving it pretty much all I had, and I bent the needle bar, which is, you know, I didn't even think I was going to be able to break it loose. But, oh, you <laughs> Here, let's get these nets out of here. Oh, my God. There you go. Pretty nice-sized fish, though. Look at this. It's beautiful. Really nice, actually. This is the first time Trevor has fished in Nasa, and the first lift is encouraging. Oh, look at all this fish. It's great. We just got to figure out how to not freeze up nets. There we go. Despite the results, Trevor is rethinking this location. I don't know, something's, something's not right about this. With frozen lines and sketchy ice, Trevor decides to pull his nets up. I don't think it's the right move to leave the nets in where they are now. I don't want to come back to them, and they end up being actually frozen up, and we have to pop every single cork out of the water. That's a huge pain in the ass. So they're going to come up today, and I'm going to reevaluate, and probably in a week's time come back and set. like today in Gimli Harbor we're coming out and we're gonna lift four and see what's here we set a few and you see you check in on them hopefully there's some fish and they're here near the main harbor at Gimli is where Jean and Candace Pishke like to fish it's close to their home base and they've had success here in years past today marks their first lift of the season Oh, this is so exciting. I can't wait to see what's in here. Are you excited? I'm almost falling down. Oh, I'm excited. This is, first lift is always exciting. Christmas morning, Either it's right? going to go really good or it's going to go really bad. <laughs> <laughs> two boxes after two nights would be spectacular. Who knows? Um, I just hope that uh, there's something here. If there's a third box, maybe you're going to have to put a lot more nets in the water. Doesn't feel all that heavy. <laughs> Oh, don't say that. It'd be a good day or a sad don't say day. say that. There's a good one. Two for the good guys. There we go. That's ah, better. Good sign, eh? Yeah, that 